previously we looked at a basic product if you go over to products all products we've made one product before we've made the chocolate chip cookie it's a simple kind of product uh, it has a price it has a category it's pretty simple pretty straightforward well we can make other kinds of of products that are more complex let's say we wanted to make um, pies that are sold as small, medium, and large. Let's say I want to sell pecan pie, small, medium, and large. And then each one's a different price, and each one's a different picture, and each one's, you know, different things. But they're all related to one concept, pecan pie. So in order to set this up, it's a little bit of setup, but once we do it together, it should make sense. Uh, we're going to deal with something called attributes. Notice here on the left side, we have uh, something called attributes. So let's go to products, attributes. Let's see, under products, attributes, a little bit of explanation. Attributes let you define extra product data, such as size or color. You can use these attributes in the shop sidebar using the layered nav bar. So these attributes are also, it's telling you there that these are also things sort of for organization, so people can find a variety of your types of products um, in, in, uh, in your menus. But the way we'll be using them is a way to organize different kinds of one particular product, variations of a product. So the idea is first we think about like what's the, what's the name of the variation and then what are the details? So if I've got a pie that's small, medium, and small, medium, or large, what's the concept? What does small, medium, and large mean? What, what are we defining? So sizes. Sizes. So let's do that. We'll do name right here, sizes. The sizes of a particular product are going to be small, medium, and large. OK, let's say I'm selling shirts that are red, yellow, and blue. What are those red, yellow, and blue attributes? Colors. Colors. Okay, makes sense. Others are a little bit more complex. Like, let's say if I wanted to sell cookies in a, in a group of one dozen, two dozen, three dozen, what would you call that grouping of one dozen, two dozen, three dozen? Quantity. Quantity. Amount. Count. What about batch? Like a batch. One batch of cookies, two batches, half a batch, you know, whatever word. That's what we're defining right here first. What is the parent name? What is the name of the thing? I kind of think about it in terms of a, like, you know, what do you call a group of fish? A school. What do you call a group of birds? A flock. What do you call a group of crows? A murder. A murder of crows. So a group of things often have an interesting name. A group of pies that I'm selling is a size or sizes. So we'll call this sizes. Slug is just an internal name that it gives itself. You don't have to fill it in. It automatically gives itself based on what you named it here. So don't worry about slug. And uh, these other things, yeah, don't worry about those. Just click Add Attribute. So we're defining the top level name of the thing. Next, we need to go into each individual term, small, medium, large. This is where we add it here. So adding variations is, again, a little weird, a little tricky the first time you do it. Because first we have to create the attribute name, then the terms. So on the right side, click Terms, Configure Terms. You get a screen that looks very, very similar as before, Attributes can be assigned to products and variations. OK. And then we have name, slug, description. So here is where we could do small. Description could be, I don't know, 6 inch diameter. Medium, 12 inch. And then large, uh, 14, 16, whatever. We're adding here. Making pizzas or cookies? <laughs> we're, we're, doing, we're working with pies this oh, time. Oh, pies, that's right. Pies. Pies. I would go with a six inch cookie, sure. <laughs> so next we'll do medium. Now, these right now I'm thinking of in terms of pies, but I could use this whole small, medium, and large concept for any other product I'm selling. I could be selling a small, medium, or large cupcake or cookie or whatever. So 
you could have completely separate um, attributes and and terms for each individual thing, or you could think of them very generically in that everything that I have is going to be small, medium, and large. So if I think of it generically, and maybe not put an actual description, 6 inch, 12 inch, you know, it's, it's another way to do it. So a medium pie will be 12 inch, and then we'll go large. We can arrange these in the correct order a little later. It'll just put them alphabetically. Uh, and large will do 16 inch. So it's not too, too obvious, but it says at the top here, product sizes. I'm editing my collection of a thing called sizes. So if it was batch, product batch would show at the very top. And then the various terms related to it are right there. Let's say one batch is 12. And then a batch of two is 24. Half a batch, six. So however I want to define that. If you go back to attributes here on the left side, in the main attributes screen, I've got sizes as the name of my unit, and then the particular terms associated, large, medium, and small. OK, so in general, step one, I create an attribute, the parent element. Step two, I create the terms related to the parent grouping or element. Step three, I apply these to a particular product. Let's do it to a brand new product. We have already cookies, but I want to do this to uh, pies. So on the left side products, we will add new. This will be pecan pie. Pick one of three sizes of our amazing pie that takes you back to Grandma's kitchen. You don't have to write that. I'm just putting some stuff there. You can put whatever, just gibberish, ABC. But I'm just putting definitely the name of the pie and then some text. On the right side, importantly, um, OK, I've got the cakes. Um, I've got the pies category. If you don't have a pies category, you can create one. But I will select the category of pies. Scrolling down. Okay, so this is the this is the important part. Product data, simple product, change that to variable product. See right here, the default was simple. Now we want variable, because we need to use these various terms that we've made up. So change your product data to variable. Then we have attributes. We need to attach the attributes that we've created so that then we can make variations, because small pie will cost a certain amount and medium another amount and large another amount and they may have a different picture and other things well this is the part then as you start to add a variety of these parent um, attributes they'll start to be listed here it says custom product attribute and I currently have sizes that's the name that we made up a moment ago once I start to create a lot of them they'll all be listed there so click sizes click add Sizes are going to be visible on the product page, of course. I want the person to be able to pick small, medium, and large. So that's on. The thing that's odd to me is that this other one is off, which is very important. And I'm sure there's ways that you use it without it. But like 99% of what I've worked with, always you need this turned on. I want to use small, medium, and large for variations so I can have different prices. So make sure you turn on used for variations. And so I'm going to sell small, medium, and large pies. I will then select.
from here. I want the small, medium, and large. Most likely select all will be the easiest because instead of clicking here, I want to use large, I want to use small, well, uh, I, I want to use them all. So just select, just click select all. Sometimes for a particular product, maybe I'm only selling it as small and medium. So maybe that's why you might want to do them individually. Again, if you made the um, variations generic enough that I will be selling small, medium, and large pies and cookies and cupcakes, makes sense. But when I said 12 inch and six and 12 inch and six inch and, and 16 inch, that doesn't make sense for cookies. So I want all of the possible terms. Save. Now save the save these attributes. This is different than, than publishing up here. We haven't published it yet. You want to save these. So now it says here that this product, pecan pie, will have an attribute of sizes, which are the terms of small, medium, and large. Okay, next step, variations. This is definitely one of the things about WooCommerce that it really helps to have someone walking you through it because it's just, you know, how many steps are we in? We're in five steps here. Next, under variations, um, we have create variations from all attributes or add one by one. Most likely we will do the second one, create variations from all attributes. I want to create a product of small and medium and large. So usually that one also, it's not the default, but usually that's the one that you want. I've made all these variations, I want to use them, therefore create variations from all the attributes. The weird thing is that when you click go, it'll pop up to say, be careful here, if you've got a lot of different variations, more than 50 of them, this could be slow. Well, I hardly ever see that, but that's like, if I've got a t-shirt that is small, medium, and large, plus one that's red, one that's white, one that's blue. So you can have multiple dimensions of variations because I want a large shirt that's white, a large shirt that's red, a large shirt that's blue. Well, I have a small one that's red or white or blue. So that's three times three times three, I think, which I guess is nine. You'll have nine different versions of the one product. And this is saying if you have too many of these variations, more than 50, it could slow or, cr or crash, which is not usually the problem for anyone. So just click OK. Three were added. And now I have here, this can be opened and closed. Now I've got large, medium, and small, where I can go to each individual one. Small, so what would a small pie cost? $7. Regular price, $7. A medium pie, let's say $10. I'm just picking values. And the large one, $15. So it's not too obvious. This is the example again with WordPress that sometimes, where do I click? Well, you don't see this until you hover over. When you hover over one of these, then you can click to open it and fill in the detail. When you hover over, you also get this little arrangement icon because from the drop-down menu that people will see, they will see it as large, medium, or small, which is not so bad, but maybe I want small first. You can drag that up. And so to each of these, I've added a price. Each of these can have their own sale price. Each of these can have their own amount of stock. So for large, I've only got, you know, three of them. But for small, I've got 30 of them. I can click and add a thumbnail for each individual product. If I wanted, I can have weights and everything different.
I'll save that. And then I'll publish. So all of that was setting ourselves up for a more advanced product, variable product. I had a lot of little steps. Attributes variations, we'll do it again together in one moment. But now I want to publish it, and I want to see how does it actually look like in the real world. Yes? Um, so I'm trying to add a sale price to it, um, but I have to add you have to add a regular price first because we, we needed it needs to know what did our starting point what was our starting point point price first. So after we add those items, we can save and then we can publish and then let's look at what does it look like in the actual shop. I'll go to visit site. I have shop. I have pecan pie, and here it says it ranges. To get a pecan pie, it's somewhere between seven and fifteen dollars. Whereas chocolate chip cookie is just one of one dollar. I can easily add it because it's a simple product. I have to select here specifics. So I never added a photo. That's why it also has the generic icon. But then you've got the drop down here sizes. That's the name of the thing that we created. Choose an option. Here's the three things: large, medium, and small. If I then go to the small, it changes to be that focused of the price, large, so forth. Quantity still there. I want two medium ones. Add those both to the cart. So I added two pecan pies. And just to check it out in my cart, two of them, $10 each. I've got two, $20 pecan pie medium. My coupon is still in effect right there. I'm saving $10. And so So let's say now we, for that cookie, it was one cookie for $1. Uh, actually, I'm trying to sell cookies in batches. I'm trying to sell them as one dozen, two dozen, half dozen batches. Let's upgrade our cookie product. So instead of one cookie at a time, we're selling them in batches. We'll go back to our dashboard. We will go create a product attribute for batches. Question? Um, how do the problems of adding the size? Click on it. Hit on it. Put it outside of it. Or it's already added. As long as it should be here. So for cookies, I'm going to change them into batches, therefore I need a new attribute. Scrolling down, which I will call batch, a batch of cookies. We'll have one dozen, two dozen, half dozen. So add that attribute. There are no terms yet. I've got batch, but no term. So I'll go to configure term. On the left side, I'll say one dozen, which will description 12 of the item. A dozen is 12. Two dozen. Which is 24. Half dozen. Six of the item. So you see 
here the slug writes itself. It just takes whatever you wrote, puts it lowercase, puts a dash. This is just internal name of the thing. It just um, is like, you know, the, the link address of the item. And uh, I didn't show it last time, but noticing it here, uh, we've got the, um, the count. How many of those items do I have in my inventory? Not exactly inventory, but how many products exist in my database with that attribute? So just to confirm it, when I go back to attributes, I've got two so far, batch and sizes. And batch has, uh, sizes has these. Batch has those. And I want to apply batch to my existing cookie. I can make a brand new cookie, but I can also add it to an existing one. Actually, uh, we'll see how that actually works because we've already had a person add a $1 cookie to their cart, but we're about to change it, so now the cookies are gonna be in different prices and sizes, so I'm not exactly sure what will happen to the person um, that already added it to the cart, but we'll see. So if I go now back to, instead of add new, I'm gonna to go to all my products. I have the chocolate chip cookie, I'm going to edit it. I also have duplicate. Mm, let's see what happens with edit. All right, so it was originally a single priced item. Where do we go so that we can have this more advanced product? Variable product. Variable product. Yep, right over here. Instead of product data simple, we have variable product. All right, after we set that to variable product, what's the next step? What other tab or screen do we go to? Attributes. So custom product attribute, now I've got batch and size. So obviously we add batch. We add batch. We need to make sure that a batch is going to be used for variations. And we want to select all possibilities. One dozen, two dozen, half dozen. Save. So used for variations, selecting them all. Save. So now I have batch as a possibility for this product. Lastly, variations. I want to add, I want to create variations from those three attributes. One dozen, half dozen, Two dozen. I want to create variations from all three of those possibilities. And again, just confirm OK. Question? So now I've got half dozen, one dozen, two dozen, and I can start to set their prices, their order, etc. See, half a dozen cookies. We'll say is five dollars. One dozen is eleven. And then right here we'll really trick people. We'll say, okay, two dozen usually costs twenty-four dollars, but you can save if you buy it right now for twenty-three dollars. I have a question. Do you have both the size and the quantity? Can you do both? You can do it. How do you do it to change the value? So this was the... Oh, I see. I, that's what I did. So once I add those prices... Once I save those prices or descriptions or whatever, I can click Save on that and then update the product. Don't forget to update. We've added something new to it, but then we have to update the product so it pushes it back out to the live cart, the live shop. And let's see, if I go back to visit, how do my items look over here? Hmm, okay, it removed 
the cookie that was there previously. I previously had the cookie that was $1, but now that really doesn't exist internally anymore, so it looks like it removed it from my cart, even though I guess that does make sense. And then I go back to shop, and then now, cookies, oh, and then I've got the little icon that says sale. So that again is enticing people. What's a sale? Where can I save money? So five to twenty-three dollars selecting. So choose an option, half, one, or two. And you'll see that if it's two dozen, it's got the price price the cross price the price crossed out because uh, the original uh, price is being replaced with a sale price. And when I view the cart now, I've got the chocolate chip cookie, two dozen of them, So that was our look at um, one type of advanced product, the one that we'll focus on at the moment. Variation is very popular. People want to do this type of product all the time because uh, I'm selling different versions of the same thing. So a simple product doesn't fully work. Uh, we have then variable product. Now other kinds that we're not going to get into just yet, but we have grouped products which are a way to uh, to link products together. So let's say uh, I'm trying to sell uh, cookies plus milk. So if you buy one product, it wants you to also get another product. Within these linked products, we can say, if you're going to buy this product, then we will also add to it another, another product, grouping. This lets you choose which products are part of this group. We have upsells which are, let's say you're about to buy this particular product and it costs $10. Well, we've got another product that's even better and it's only $15, it's only $5 more. So um, we can upsell, we can have the system automatically guide people, would you like this? Or actually, you probably want this one, you're gonna sell them uh, up a little higher, it's worth a little bit more. So these are the things I wanted to focus on for the moment. Um, general questions before I talk about what the assignment is. Does that make sense? Creating coupons, uh, editing the menu a little bit, creating variable products, make sense? Any general questions? Yeah, it won't let you crop an image? No. Okay, I'll check with you in a moment. Um, your image. Yeah, I'll check with you to see what, what you're trying to do, but it should let it shouldn't need to crop it, it should give it the full size and then you'll be able to zoom in and see it. So we'll I'll check you in a moment. Um, if we look at um, if you want to look on Canvas or not, I'll pull it up here. But on Canvas we have a we have an assignment, an in-class assignment. Um, looking at there, um, what you need to do is you're gonna get graded on um, editing your menu. You're going to be graded on coupons. You're going to be graded on variable products. So basically, create at least two categories and arrange them in the site menu. This is the part that I'm going to let you uh, go one step beyond what we did. We did it via social media, but you need to put product categories in your menu here. Based on what we did previously, you should be able to figure it out, but we need a brand new thing for uh, categories. And we've got a few categories, right? We've got cakes and pies and cookies, so I need to see that you can figure out how do I add these product categories to my menu. Um, that's one thing, three points. Coupons, you need to create at least two coupons. So besides the one that we created, you need to create some other ones. You need to put expiration dates and such. Three points. Then besides the one that we created, variable product, you need to create at least two more products with variations. 
four points on that. So little hints and such there in the assignment. Um, that'll be due before you leave, 10 points. And um, when you, once you're ready to show that, you can call me over and I'll check you off. But that's based on what we learned today about menu items, coupons, and variable products.